Okay, welcome to Game Theory, and today we're going to solve a sequential game problem. So this is from uh, my Game Theory course at Susquehanna University, Sequential Games. A game between an incumbent firm, it's already in the market, and a potential new firm lasts for two periods. At the beginning of each period, the potential entrant decides whether or not it will participate in the market that period, whether it will be in or out. For each period, the incumbent observes the entrance in or out choice, or the potential entrance in or out choice. If the potential entrance in, the incumbent chooses to fight or accommodate. In order for the potential entrant to choose in in period two, they must have chosen in in period one. So if the entrant chooses out, it's out forever. And then we have payoffs. The entrant earns zero for each period when it's out of the market, one for each period where it's in the market and the incumbent accommodates, but loses one each period it's in the market and the incumbent fights. The incumbent earns X for each period in which it has a monopoly, and Z for each period which it's in and the incumbent accommodates, and the incumbent earns Y when it's in and the incumbent fights. And you see some assumptions on the payouts. Assume no discounting and draw the extensive form game and use backward induction to find the unique subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. Part B then says, now consider the following modifications. Everything's the same, but there's a credit constraint. So if the potential entrant were to lose, sustain a loss in period one, because the incumbent fights, the entrant would not be allowed to come back into the market and period two. Basically, you know, it goes bankrupt if we're thinking about this. Draw the game again, use backward induction. As we, as we saw in the game, right, the initial, uh, the game is between an incumbent firm and a potential entrant, last two periods, and the potential entrant acts, acts first, and I'm actually going to, um, to give myself a little bit more space because I know how this game looks. I'm going to start it over here. So we've got the potential entrant chooses in or out. Out or in. And remember what it said. If the potential entrant's out, it's out for good. So I'm going to leave some space for payoffs once we uh, get the whole tree diagram drawn. If the potential entrant is in, then the incumbent then the incumbent chooses fight or accommodate. And that's round one. After round one, the game repeats, right? The potential entrant can choose whether to be in or out. And remember, if they're out, the game is over. Right? There's no strategic choice for the incumbent to make. But if they're in, once again, the incumbent has the decision of fighting or accommodating. So we don't have the payouts filled in, but this is what the tree diagram is going to look like without the payouts included. Now let's go through and figure out what the payouts are in this game. Uh, recall the potential entrant earns zero each period it's out of the market. So if it goes out right away, it just earns zero in period one and zero in period two. Therefore, it would earn zero, as we see right there. The incumbent, if they get a monopoly, uh, earns X for each period in which it has a monopoly which period the, the potential entrant is out. So that's x, but they earn x twice. So x plus x, or of course, more simply, they would earn 2x. 
Now let's move through the game. Um, we're going to consider this case here where what happens if the potential entrant chooses in um, and then the incumbent chooses accommodate and then the potential entrant chooses out. Okay, so we know from the game um, if the potential entrant's out, it gets zero that period. The first period, the potential entrant would have gone in and the incumbent accommodated. The potential entrant earns a dollar in that period and zero when it's out, so they earn one plus zero or one. The incumbent, they have a monopoly one of the periods, and we know when they have a monopoly, they earn X. And we also know from the problem that one of the periods there, if the potential entrant entered and they chose to accommodate, which from our problem they've earned Z, so they earn Z plus X. I'm going to go over to the other period where the potential entrant chooses out. Um, so we'll fill out this payout right here next. And in that one, the potential entrant entered the incumbent fought, and then the potential entrant decided to exit the game. Okay, well in that one, the potential entrant earned zero the period they're out, and they lost a dollar when they were in and the incumbent fought. So it's negative one. The potential entrant um, loses one across the two periods there. The incumbent had a monopoly one period, and they chose to fight the other. And when they choose to fight, the incumbent earns Y each period where they, they're in and uh, when the potential entrant joined the market and they chose to fight. So the total payout here is Y plus X. So the payout's here, negative one, Y plus X. Okay, we're gonna go down, we're gonna start in the bottom, bottom right over here. When the potential entrant enters and the incumbent accommodates twice, right? Potential entrant in, incumbent accommodates. Potential entrant in, incumbent accommodates. Let's figure out what, what that looks like. So, well, the potential entrant gets a dollar each time they're in and the incumbent accommodates, so that's one plus one or two. And we know the incumbent earns Z each period when the entrant's in and they've chosen accommodate, so that's two times Z. So the payout's here, two for the potential entrant, two times Z for the incumbent. The moving over just one spot to the left, potential entrant in, incumbent accommodates, potential entrant in, and incumbent fights in the second period. Well, the potential entrant gains $1 in one period, but loses in the next, so they end up with a payoff of zero. The incumbent gets Z for the period where they chose to accommodate and Y for the period where they chose to fight. So they earn Y plus Z. Let's look to the other side. Potential entrant in, incumbent fights. Potential entrant in, incumbent accommodates. Well, this one's actually pretty easy because we really just solved it. It's, a, it's now the opposite order, but in, fight, in, accommodate is going to have the same payouts as in, in, accommodate, in, fight. So what we do here is we know it's going to be $1 gain and $1 loss for the potential entrance, so zero, and we know it's going to be Y plus Z for the incumbent. Exact same payouts here and here for both sides. Finally, potential entrant in, incumbent fight, potential entrant in, incumbent fight are Potential entrant is going to lose a dollar both periods, and our incumbent called they get a period they get a payoff of y each time they fight when the potential entrant is in, so it's two y. And here you have the 
fully drawn out game tree, the tree diagram. Now we solve. So we're gonna use backward induction. So we first solve for the subgames from the bottom. Uh, if we start at this subgame, the incumbent could fight or accommodate, and they're looking at a payoff of y plus z or 2z. And from our problem, we know that z is greater than y, which means 2z is greater than y plus z. So the incumbent would accommodate. Over on the bottom left side, the incumbent could fight for 2y or accommodate for y plus z. So y, 2y, as you know, of course, is y plus y. So you could get y plus y or y plus z. So once again, we're comparing y and z. We know, once again, from the problem that z is greater than y. So the incumbent would, oops, incumbent would choose to accommodate. Now we're looking at what the potential entrant would choose to do. So at this decision node, potential entrant could get $2 or $1, right? Because we know what the incumbent will do um, if we know, we know the incumbent, I'm sorry, hit the wrong button here. We know the incumbent will accommodate if gets down to the spot. So two is greater than one, our potential entrant would choose in. Um, potential entrant on the other side, if they went in and the incumbent fought to start, is looking at a payoff of negative one or a payoff of zero. Well, zero is greater than negative one. So the potential entrant would jump into the market. Now the incumbent is looking whether to fight or accommodate, and we're looking at a payoff of y plus z versus 2z. And once again, this is could be thought of as z plus z versus y plus z. So we're just comparing z versus y. And as we have seen before, z is greater than y. So we know the incumbent will accommodate. And then the potential entrance comparing a payoff of zero with a payoff of two. Zero is greater than two. Oops, I'm sorry. I, zero is greater than two. Or, two is greater than zero. Potential entrant is going to enter the market. And we've solved for the game. Um, what we would say is the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. The potential entrant enters twice and the incumbent accommodates both times. And we have solved for part A of the problem. Now, part B of the problem, recall, says, let's consider the exact same game, but now there's a credit constraint. So if the potential entrant ever loses money, they're out, and they're out they cannot re-enter the game. Well, we know if the potential entrant comes in and the incumbent fights, they lose money. So this whole part of the game would never be feasible anymore because the potential entrant can't re-enter if that happens. So we literally just erase that entire part of the game and we know the potential entrant would lose a dollar. The incumbent, one period they have a monopoly, the other period uh, they fought when the potential entrant came into the market, and we know if they fight when they come into the market they earn Y. So that is the tree diagram for, uh, for this revised game for part B. Solving again, 
uh, we see that if we're working from the bottom, the incumbent would accommodate here because 2z is greater than y plus z. The incumbent, or the potential entrant, I'm sorry, would choose in if they got down here. The incumbent could fight and earn y plus x, or accommodate and earn 2z, right? It's y plus x versus 2z. And actually, in the problem, it tells you specifically that x plus y is greater than 2z. The logic of this, just thinking beyond the numbers. One of these periods, the incumbent has a monopoly, uh, and the monopoly payout is x, which is going to be highest. The other period, they fought. And when they fight, you know, like you could think of a price war. They're earning a little bit lower because they're engaged in a price war. But it's worth it for this incumbent firm to lose a little bit of money the period they have the price war to get the monopoly in the other period. Y plus X is greater than 2Z, so the incumbent would fight here. Well, then the potential entrant is going to be looking at losing a dollar or zero. Well, zero is naturally better than one. So for part B, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium the potential entrant does not enter. And the game's just over there, so that's that's the solution to this problem. Thank you. Uh, once again, this is a, a good example of a, a reasonably complex uh, undergraduate problem for backward induction uh, and solving for the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, or as some uh, some textbooks like to call it, the rollback equilibrium. Uh, once again, my name is Matt Rosu. I hope you enjoyed this video.